And the idea was that, just like in the Old Testament, when you sacrificed a spotless lamb to Yahweh, in the New Testament, the spotless lamb is represented by Jesus, who was literally um, murdered and executed as a human sacrifice to atone for the sins of humanity, which were apparently so bad that they required execution as the price Pay. Right. You know, last month uh, when I was talking to uh, Kyla Miller, uh, I brought up Jonathan Edwards, uh, at, who, um, you know, taught, went on at some length about how vile and contemptible all humans are in their sins. That right. They are like, uh, you know, loathsome insects being right. held over a fire that they so richly deserve to be cast into. There is no way to argue that a death was required as the price of redemption for your failings mm -hmm. and then say that your failings are minor that simply right. cannot yeah. be argued if you accept that jesus died for your sins and that that was justice you have to accept that the penalty for however bad you are whatever is wrong with you whatever is flawed about you is murder is death is execution is human sacrifice you mm -hmm. have to accept that that is the just price to pay for what you did right. and the uh, the upshot is supposed to be that you know Jesus came back from the dead later, and that was a demonstration that you will also come back from the dead, and that you will live again just like Jesus lived again. That was that. That has nothing to do with the fact that the pay payment price for the sins of humanity is a human sacrifice, is an execution. And uh, I, I mentioned my Jewish upbringing earlier, and I tried to think about some songs or traditional Jewish songs. Um, I can't think of any that really match your theme because it seems to me like Jews don't have that concept of uh, deserving uh, of deserving death. I mean, you know, I'm not real familiar with the Orthodox culture, you know, the the Jewish right. uh, fundamentalists, so to speak. Um, but it seems to me like a lot of the Jewish stories are are not so much like, oh, we deserve you know as bad as we get it's more like oh all these terrible things happen to us why why is this happening and then and then sometimes you know god comes through and it's like yay you know, we won <laughs> there you go we made so him happy it's it's never so i, I okay. mean it's not so much a focus on the failings of humanity but as sort of sort of a constant struggle that that you know it's a good thing when when it ends happily okay and see, within Christianity, there it's absolutely out the window that anything you do mm -hmm. can redeem you. Yeah. There's nothing you are capable of that can redeem you. With if, if you could redeem yourself, Jesus would not have had to die. Of course. So the redemption price is negated if it's possible for you to ever be worthy of not being separated from God for eternity or hell or whatever the doctrine dictates of total annihilation versus eternal life whatever it is that is the bad side of after you die you deserve it and there's nothing you could do to change that only Jesus dying only that execution is right. made is that's that's the arbitrary price that Yahweh came up with to, I mean, to pay himself off. Right. To say, I will accept you with me in heaven for eternity if somebody will kill somebody. Mm -hmm. That's basically the plan. And it has to be a perfect non sin it's like a sinless person. So what we're going to get to these. I, want, I wanted to explain the doctrine so that the songs make sense. Mm -hmm. The songs in some ways are symbolic, and yet you have to understand that even in their symbolism, they're referring back to an actual execution. The blood that is referenced is real blood, according to what a Christian thinks. It's not symbolic blood. It's the blood of an executed man killed for a human sacrifice to atone for the, the, how bad you are. Um, and the first one is called, Are You Washed in the Blood? Mm -hmm. And this is an invitational song. So this would be something that you would sing at the end of the service to say, you know, come on down and get baptized. And it's, uh, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? You know, lamb being that reference back to the Old Testament yeah, so altar sacrifices. For, right. It's, right. It's, it's weird because it's a metaphor of a lamb sacrifice, but it's referring to a human sacrifice right. that they do believe occurred and is justified. Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? 
and the chorus is, are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Um, and the next one is called, There's Power in the Blood. Uh, would you be free from the burden of sin? In other words, you know, do you want to get rid of your sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood, because they believe that Jesus' death redeems you from that sin. Would you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. So if you want to win over the you know, evil forces in your life, appeal to this human sacrifice and that's a good thing that you know that's the i guess the good is the human sacrifice redemptive sacrifice uh there's power 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 wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there's power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb um i can see like a comedy bit like <laughs> can you Saturday, spoof it? I mean, Saturday can you spoof Live this? Or, or, or Mitchell and Webb or something where, like, some Christian goes up to heaven and everybody's all welcoming him. In <laughs> Buckets right, of blood. Here, here's, your, yeah. here's your bath. Dive in. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. So they're talking about a flow of literal blood here. I mean... Mm -hmm. Not that it literally, you know, gushes, but yes, they're talking about the blood that was shed on a crucifix for, from a human sacrifice. This is, this is crazy. Um, this one's called Not All the Blood of Beasts. And if you're a Christian, immediately you understand what this means, which is that all of the Old Testament sacrifices of animals weren't sufficient. That's why Jesus had to be killed as a mm -hmm. sacrifice, because they were insufficient. So it says, not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give the guilty conscience peace or wash away the stain. But Christ, the heavenly lamb, takes all our sins away, a sacrifice of nobler name and richer blood than they. Believing we rejoice to see the curse removed, we bless the lamb with cheerful voice and sing his bleeding love. That doesn't quite rhyme. I guess love is supposed to <laughs> go with remove. It has an O V E. Remove. Yeah. Re I don't know. But yeah, I mean, this is, and that's the other thing is they mingle this with words like love and mercy, so that this human sacrifice that we were required to make to redeem ourselves is supposedly a, a gesture of love and mercy, mm -hmm. and that's what children are taught. <clears throat> the next one's called nothing but the blood. Um, and just the chorus on it, it says, Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I said there's nothing you can do. Right. There is nothing you can do to redeem yourself. You are irredeemable. Irredeemable. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So all my righteousness, anything good that I am, that's what this is. Uh, then there's Just As I Am, uh, this song, Just As I Am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come. I wanted to add that last verse because it was interesting to me that it acknowledges that even if you're having trouble believing, you're conflicted, you have doubts, you, it's okay, just just put it aside, just go with it, right. disregard it, just believe, just accept. There's an awful accept. lot of cr Christian literature set up to address doubts. Uh, yeah, well this one just says, I, it's I okay if you doubt, just go with it. I'm pretty sure I know why there's so much doubt. <laughs> it's actually fairly hard to believe. This one's called Whiter Than Snow. Uh, and the verses I picked out of this, Lord Jesus, let nothing unholy remain. Apply thine own blood and extract every stain. To get his, this blessed cleansing, I all things forgo. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And that, to me, I included that verse as a a response to people who say, if you believe in your wrong, you haven't given up anything. Well, according to this, a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Mm -hmm. You're giving over your entire life. Don't tell me that you give up nothing. 
You give up everything. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow.